What is up, high value software engineers? We are going to continue the series where we're going to build a forever store, uh, where we're going to basically store whatever we want in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer environment. So let's continue. Where did we start? Where did we left off, rather? Let me see. Let me do a git log. Uh, two episodes, which is Gucci. All right, so let me do make run. Okay, I think we started with this peer-to-peer uh, -peer package, right? We are implementing our own peer-to-peer -peer package. Let me see. Uh, the main. Yes, and then I think TCP transport. All right, we have these things. So I think what we're going to do next is basically we are doing this message decoding here. And it's not the decoding of our payload, but it's the decoding of the RPC. Actually, the RPC between between two peers. And I think we... What is this stamp, actually? What the hell? I think remove the stamp, some relics, some leftover relics. Uh, and let me do settings real quick first. And make this uh, 18 for the blind homies. I think what we're going to do is open up message. And I think we're going to rename this to RPC. An RPC strict. That makes more sense. RPC. And maybe we should rename the package to RPC, but A. Um, message. So we're going to say this is an RPC. We're going to say RPC. This should be an RPC. And... This is going to be an RPC, and of course, this is going to be an RPC. RPC, all the things. Uh, what is going on here? This should be a small caps RPC, by the way. And let me open up. Um, I think we're Gucci, actually. And I think we have some... The test is, is actually broken. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's because we basically have uh, our transport options, right? Instead of making this, so we should do like uh, ops. It's going to be transport. Hmm. TCP transport ops like this. And I'm going to say that the listen address is going to be, uh, let's do 3000. 3000, please. We need uh, the handshake, right? We did our handshake funk. That's going to be a knob handshake funk. We're going to, for now, we're not going to implement any handshake funk. So you see that we have the ability to create a handshake funk. But we don't going to use it. And then we need a decoder. <clears throat> and of course, we provided the default decoder. Uh, so we can just use that and then put in opts. What's going on here? Opts inside here and then... We want to assert the listen address. That's going to be the listen address. Listen. Address. Like this. Uh, and that's going to be... We could do something like this, right? To test it. Like this. Make test real quick. Undefined message, encoding. Yeah, we need to change this. It's going to be um, an RPC. Do we actually want a pointer? Not quite sure. Not quite sure. Make test. I think we're blocking in a test, by the way. Yeah, the select statement. This should be good. Let's make test real quick. Uh, and everything is working fine. That's good. Then let's go to main. Uh, let's do a make run. That's working. Let's open up uh, Talnet. My microphone is, is, is doing crazy stuff. Uh, Talnet's going to be local host 3000. Uh, and then we're going to actually send some messages, by the way. We're going to say, um, hello, you. And then see what's going on. Yeah, so it's all working fine. We have uh, from from who is this is this coming. And the payload, which is sending, which is fine. Working all good. Um, 
let's open up transport real quick. The peer interface. I think the first uh, method we're going to have in our peer is close. Very important. Uh, close like this. So we can close the peer is connection. And if we open up TCP transport, or transport itself, uh, enable to read these messages, we need to have some function which is called a consume, which will return a channel of RPC. And now we need to make sure that it's going to work. So we're going to say uh, TCP transport. Uh, and that's going to be, let me quickly think about this. We're going to say an RPC chain, which is going to be a chain of RPC. A chain of RPC. And then we're going to say here that the RPC channel is going to be make me a chain of RPC. Easy. Then we need to in, 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 uh, implement our uh, interface. We're going to say T TCP transport. We're going to say consume, and that's going to return a channel of RPC. And you see this, this syntax, right? This basically means, if you watched the concurrency for beginners, this basically means we can only read from the channel and we cannot send to the channel, right? Very important. And we're just going to return the RPC channel, like this. And then we could say consume implements the transport interface just like that you could say uh, which will return a read only channel uh, for reading the incoming messages sent from received from another peer actually Received from uh, another peer, another peer in the network. Yes, that's good. All right, so now we need to, let's do this cursor out of the way. Now we need to find a way to actually put that uh, into, our, into our channel, right? So right now we're just printing this channel. But we're going to say something like that the TRPC channel is going to be the RPC. It's going to be an RPC. It's going to be the RPC, right? What's going on? That's a pointer. We don't want that. Although we need the address here for decoding. So that's good. Yeah, this is, is, is failing because uh, peer does not implement the 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 close interface, right? The peer interface. So we're gonna say uh, peer TCP peer, by the way. We're gonna say close. Gonna return an error, and we're just gonna say return p com close, and then we can say close m uh, implements the peer interface just like that all right i think that's good um let's test that out right how are we gonna do this we're gonna say uh, listen and accept maybe we're gonna boot up a new uh, go routine here quick to test this real uh, real fast we're gonna say for tr consume is gonna be the message. I think it's something like that. Uh, print a len message, or we could say print f. What's going on here? Print f and then say percentage plus v. Uh, maybe a new line. Something like that. Is it gonna work? Uh, I have no clue. Let's let's run this. 
uh, running is going, is working. You could say telnet localhost 3000. Hello. Yeah, it's working fine, right? Although we have this relic, this slash n relic for some reason. Yeah, we don't have a, a bad new line. Uh, that's crazy. Why is this wrong? Oh yeah, of course. This is not a new, this is a new line. I see. Make run. We could say telnet uh, local host three thousand, and then do it again. Yes, perfectly fine. So now we can consume. It's very important because if we uh, attach or transport to a server or something in some way, then we need to have we need to call consume on any kind of transport and the TCP transport will return his channel. But for example, any other transport will also return hit his uh, respective channel, which he communicates over the wire. And in our case, it's TCP, but it could be anything, right? We need to make it generic. So that's fine. Um, it's, it's actually capturing output. What's going on here? Let's close that. Am I OBS? I hope it's fine. All right, so we have that. The next thing we're going to do is um, we need to find a way because let's open up real, real quick TCP transport. I'm going to show you. Yeah, so this speed map, I don't think we're going we're gonna to keep it. We not need a speed map because I think the transport is not going to be responsible to keeping the peers because peer is an interface, so we could... Uh, I think the server is responsible to maintaining a list of his peers, which could be a peer interface, which could be any peer, right? It could hold uh, peers that are connected with TCP. It could hold peers that are connected with a local transport. It could even hold peers connected with gRPC. It does not really matter. A peer is an interface and our server could hold any kind of peer, any kind of connection with his respect uh, respective transport. That is the beauty of this generic implementation. But we need to have a function, we need to have a way to notify the server that there is a new peer, that the server can do with a new peer whatever he wants. So I think to do that is to do something in TCP and we could say something, we have decoder, we have handshake func, we could say that the peer func or on peer is gonna be a function of a peer with an error, right? And then we could say that if this function returns an error, we are not, we're going to drop the peer. Um, how are we going to do this? Um, first of all, I think I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say a defer func here. I'm going to call it or not. How does it work? It's like this, right? And then we're going to say, um, actually, do it here. And then maybe say var error, add error. Then yoink, paste it in here. And then we could say uh, something like uh, dropping peer connection, read loop. Yeah. Uh, dropping peer connection, and then we could say an error, which is going to be the error here on top. Then we're going to say com close. So we could not do anything here, we could just return here. This can be good. And here we could say if error, first of all we're going to say if t on peer, right? If that's not nil, if somebody provided this function, then we're gonna call it. If somebody does not provide this function, then we're not gonna call it. But if somebody has uh, provided us this function, then we're gonna call it. Then we're gonna say, uh, if r is t on peer, and we're gonna say peer. No, it's gonna be the peer, yeah, we just made. And if the error is not nil, then we're gonna say, these errors needs to be can new errors actually. Then we're gonna just return. Yeah. 
something like that. So basically what happens is we're gonna do our handshake, if that's okay, then we're gonna do the on peer. If that fails, we're gonna drop. If that continues, then we're gonna start our read loop, right? Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So if you go to main, we could say here, uh, on peer. Let, let, let's, let's try this without, let's try this without first. Uh, make run. So that should be normal, right? You could say uh, telnet localhost 3000. Hello. You see everything is working fine. We get these messages. Uh, but if we say something like uh, on peer, right? And we're going to say that's a function of uh, peer error. And then we're going to say something like um, return fmt error f failed the on peer func. Uh, there should be a peer to peer peer like this. And we run this again. Right? And then we connect then, localhost 3000, right? Wait, let me do this. Right, it, it, it instantly drops a connection, right? So we connect it and, and, and suddenly Telnet just uh, exits out. And that's because here, right? Dropping peer connection, filthy on peer punk, which is nice because that means that our logic is working. And of course, uh, we could say here, right? You could say, um, Let me do we could say on peer or something. We don't need to specify it in the in, uh, directly into the transport options. What you could say on peer is gonna be the on peer here. It's gonna work perfectly fine as long as it has the correct signature, right? Um that's fine. Now we return an error, but we could also just return nil, right? So it's gonna work. So we could return nil here, and then we could say fmt uh, println, and we could say uh, doing some logic with the peer outside of TCP transport. And let's boot down that up, and then we could say hello, we can send messages, and then uh, we're gonna say doing some logic with the peer without transport. So it's all working fine if we have a new peer. Uh, we are actually in a good spot, that's nice. All right, let's close it up. Yes, I think it's good, so. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're in a good spot. It's going to be a short episode, this one, because I think right now we have everything we need to have. Uh, or maybe, wait, we can actually not. Uh, I want to test something. Because on peer, you could say this is the peer, right? And I want to test something. What happens if we do peer close? That's a good question. What happens if you do that? I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. It's a very important thing because that's gonna basically um, drop the peer from from whatever. Yeah. So we see that's good that we have this error. Now we have this loop, right? Use of closed network connection, and it's in the read. Um. How are we gonna fix this? Let's open up P real quick. Which is in transport, right? Close. It's in TCP transport, actually. It's here, right? Uh, if you have an error, we keep looping. Uh, 
Uh, let me see. So what happens is that we we have a we have an error here in this decode. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna drop the connection? Or are we gonna check the errors? Good question. Do uh, let me. Can we do net? Air closed. So I think we could do something like this because I think if, if, if somebody s sends us a wrong payload, I don't think we need to punish it. I don't think we need to punish him and say, yo, you're out because you sent a, a wrong payload. But of course, uh, we could say something like this, right? R is going to be this. And then we could say uh, if R... is going to be net r con closed then we're going to say uh, return and we could do it like this and otherwise we're going to say it's a tcp read error is that something that's going to work let's try it out uh telnet uh local host 3000 Use of closed network connection. It, it's not working. Hmm. Oh, it's return. Yeah. I think it's fine. Air, clunk, air, air closed. It, it is... Are closed is uh, turn my own is already been closed. Yeah, I think that's good, right? Because can we can we can we panic the air to see what kind of air this is? It's a very important thing we need to get uh, uh, working. It's not make run. It's gonna be telnet, right? Yeah, you see, it's it's a use of of, of closed network connection. The question is 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 um, let us see reflect a type of R. It's a net op error. Hmm. That's um uh... Can we not do this? Damn. Okay, I think we need to investigate this. I think enable to make this. Um, let's return. Let's return for now. Let's see. Let's just return. All right. And now it works, right? Now we have dropping a peer uh, because we have a use of closed network connection. I think there should be a way so we can assert this specific error. So we only drop the peer if it's that error. Instead of just a normal error, actually. Uh, another error. For example, a decode error or something, right? But hey, uh, I think we need to figure it out uh, soon. I will check it out. How we can do this? Maybe it's it's I don't know. We can we can see. We're gonna make it work. It's not a big big of a deal for now. 
All right, so I think we're in a good spot to actually start implementing our uh, storage and uh, server and, and connect the dots, I think. Although we will come back to this peer-to-peer -to, -peer to make this library a little bit better uh, to see what we are missing. And I think a good way to see what we are missing is to actually start implementing it so we can enhance this library. Um, because we're also, I, I'm trying, I'm planning to make uh, the world's smallest blockchain and I think we're going to use the same library, right? That that's That would be nice. And of course, only for Patreons. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in, I think, which is going to be episode four. Thanks for supporting. Cheers.